73 fainted just from hearing this story being read. Could Guts be one of the most disturbing short stories in the history of life? Chuck Palahniuk, the famous author of Fight Club, is one of the goats of transgressional literature. He's also written Haunted, 23 short stories. If you get this video to 1,000 likes in an hour, I'll double upload a disturbing breakdown right on that forehead. Anyway, one of those 23 stories is Guts, a story of stomach-churning tales of sexual escapades gone wrong. And I ask you today, what could go wrong with using a carrot in unintended ways? Story one involves a friend of ours. He told us that when he was 13, he learned that pegging was a good way to activate that good old prostate gland and make explosive messes everywhere. Hands free even. Well, it's not like our friend here can just buy a silicone ding dong off Amazon at 13 years old. He finds the next best thing. Then he pictures how it's going to look at the supermarket check stand. The lonely carrot and petroleum jelly rolling down the conveyor belt towards the grocery store cashier. All the shoppers waiting in line, watching, everyone seeing the big event he has planned. So, my friend, he buys milk and eggs and sugar and a carrot. All the ingredients of a carrot cake and Vaseline, like he's gonna stick a carrot cake up his butt. He slathers it with grease and grinds his boot down on it. Then, nothing, no money shot. Nothing happens except it hurts. Looks like our friend should have done a little more research. It's still gonna take stimulation, silly. It's supper time. Uh-oh. Mom's calling. Our friend works the carrot out and hides the filthy, stinky thing in the dirty clothes underneath the bed. However, when our friend returns to his room, he finds the carrot is gone. Mom grabbed the dirty clothes it was hiding in to do the laundry. No way she could not find the carrot. Carefully shaped with a paring knife from her kitchen, still shiny with lube and stinky. And so, story one ends. Our friend is growing up now, and even still, his mother never mentioned anything about the carrot, but it still lingers that his mom knows he wanted to make explosive messes using produce in his butt. That ghost carrot is hovering over all of them. We all have something to hide, and something we don't want to talk about. I used to have a video on a movie called Ken Park, and in the movie, one of the characters likes to get off by autoerotic asphyxiation. There is a dark interlude between stories where the author explains that some teens offing themselves was more of an erotic accident than intentional. Not to mention this phrase here explaining just how dirty we are getting. Dead from everywhere. They put some pants on their kid. They made it look better. Intentional at least. Alright, so this is where it gets jarring for me specifically. But another friend of mine, he learns a new way to get off. Learning from his brother that some people in the Middle East work the worm and insert small metal rods inside of their worm through the urethra. Long story short, our friend ends up in the hospital. His parents won't even visit him. And this is how. And he sees something on a candle nearby. Down the side of the candle, there's a thin, smooth ridge of wax that just might work. Stoned and excited, he slips it down inside, deeper and deeper into the slit. With a good hank of the wax still poking out at the top, he gets to work. Those Arab guys are pretty damn smart. They've totally reinvented beating off. He's one good squeeze from shooting the money shot when the wax isn't sticking out anymore. This thin wax rod it slipped inside, all the way inside, so deep, so deep inside, he can't even feel the lump of it inside of his tube. Uh oh, this wax kid and the carrot kid are different people, but we all live pretty much the same life. It's after dinner when the kid's guts start to hurt. It's wax, so he figured it'd just melt inside of him and he'd pee it out. Now, his back hurts, his kidneys. He can't stand straight. Neither can I, I feel sick reading it. The x-rays show the truth. Something long and thin, bent double inside his bladder. This long, thin V inside him. It's collecting all the minerals in his urine. It's getting bigger, more rough, blocking his urine from getting out. His kidneys are backed up. What little that leaks out 
is red with blood. Our friend tells his parents and the doctors the truth about the Arabs getting off. They pay for the bladder operation with this college fund. One stupid mistake and now he'll never be a lawyer. <laughs> sticking stuff inside yourself, sticking yourself inside stuff, a candle in your ding dong or your head in a noose. We knew it was all gonna be big trouble. The next interlude describes pearl diving, just beating the worm underwater. Well, one kid does it in the family pool and is anxious about cleaning up his mess because that used to be my worst fear in the world. My teenage virgin sister thinking she's just getting fat then giving birth to a two-headed retarded baby. Both heads looking just like me. I believe story 3 continues with this same character introduced in the second interlude. The best part of pearl diving was the inlet port for the swimming pool filter and the circulation pump. Sitting on it gives a feeling of your butt being sucked. Still, one minute you're just a kid getting off and the next minute you'll never be a lawyer. Our third friend is getting off on top of the filter pump thingy but just listen. And then I let it happen. The money shot. The pearls. It's then that I need some air. But when I go kick off against the bottom, I can't move. I can't get my feet under me. My ass is stuck. Emergency paramedics will tell you that every year about 150 people get stuck this way, sucked by a circulation pump, most of them in Florida. Getting my underfoot under me, I kick off against the bottom. I'm kicking free, still kicking water, thrashing with both arms. I turn and look back, but it doesn't make sense. This thick rope, some kind of snake, blue, white, and braided with veins has come up out of the pool drain and it's holding onto my butt. Some of the veins are leaking blood, red blood that looks black underwater and rips away from little rips in the pale skin of the snake. So I kick at it at the slippery, rubbery, knotted skin and veins of it and more of it seems to pull out of the pool drain, knotted inside of the snake. You can see corn and peanuts. Our friend's large intestine and colon pulled out, prolapsed, guts sucked into the drain, 400 pounds of pressure. Our friend either has to drown or get gutted. This is the baby the parents brought home from the hospital 13 years ago. Here's the kid they hoped would snag a football scholarship and get an MBA, who'd care for them in their old age. Here's all their hopes and dreams floating here, naked and dead, all around him, big milky pearls wasted. Our friend bites through his intestines to get free. You never want to eat calamari again. It's hard to say what my parents were more disgusted by, how I'd gotten trouble or how I'd saved myself. The accident requires radical bowel resectioning and now our friend can barely digest meat. Hasn't gained a pound since the accident. His dad lies about what happened, saying it was a dog that drowned and got sucked in and this ending is excellent. Then my sister missed her period. Even after they changed the pool water, after they sold the house and we moved to another state after my sister's abortion, even then my folks never mentioned it again, ever. That is our invisible carrot. You now can take a good deep breath. I still have not. The end. See, that's not too bad. If Chuck read this out to me in the crowd, I'd be chilling like Michael Jackson watching Thriller. Now the writing, it kept me reading and I'm interested to see more from Mr. Polonik, but something else will keep you watching and reading too and that's this video on snuff. One of the craziest, nastiest things you've ever heard of. Click this video to see just how nuts it can get. Thanks for watching, Spooky out.